welcome to Amethyst Star Crafting. My name is Jane Allmark and I'm a UK independent stamping up demonstrator. And today I thought we would have a look at this lovely stamp set called Snowfront. Um, we've got um, a stamp set called Waterfront, which gives you these really sort of watercolory artistic sort of um, drawings. And this time we've now got Snowfront, which has got all sorts of lovely, beautiful little deer, um, different sort of styles of mountains that can be sort of snow capped, um, lovely little cottage, tiny little snowman, um, snow, all sorts of other bits and pieces. So um, I thought we'd have a go with doing a fairly sort of generic card, but something fairly simple that we can all achieve because some of these cards that I've seen um, with the waterfront are absolutely beautiful, but um, are quite difficult to achieve. So I thought that this one would be quite an easy one to achieve. Um, Snowfront is going to be available the 4th of September. Um, the other things that I'm using, there will be links below to it. And the Snowfront is in the Autumn Winter catalogue. So if you haven't got a copy and would like a copy to be able to buy from it from the 4th of September then um, please let me know and I'll be happy to send you one across. And um, you can also get it online from the 4th of September. Again, there will be a link down to my um, blog where my shop is, where you then will be able to see it um, on, in an um, online version from the 4th of September. So let's start. We need scratch paper for this because we're going to be a d doing a bit of sort of colouring on there. And we're going to take just a standard sort of size um, card blank in there. So let's start to sort of build up our scene. Now, I'm going to put a sentiment down at the bottom. <coughs> Excuse me. And I've chosen from Playful Penguins another set available 4th of September. Nothing warms the heart quite like a good friend. Because I thought that I like cards that are that can be used for Christmas time, but also can be used all year round. And I've got quite a few friends that I send cards to. And so something like this would be absolutely perfect for not only the festive season, but also any other time. So you can put whatever sentiment you want at the bottom. I'm just going to put this one because um, I just quite like that. And as I say, I have quite a few friend cards that I send so we're going to put this just down at the bottom a little bit of space in between so nothing warms the heart quite like a good friend love these um handwritten fonts handwritten fonts are just yeah I do love them um I think it makes it look as if somebody has written something at the bottom and although I'd love to be able to write like that, I can't. So it's um, it's nice to have these sort of modern fonts that are about at the moment. Um, I was saying the other day, you know, only a few years ago, all our fonts were fairly, um, fairly sort of uniform and uh, um, quite sort of square looking. Putting this back in the wrong case. Um, whereas now we have some absolutely lovely fonts on them. Um, some of the stamp sets so this is going to be a, um, a favorite of mine I think nothing warms the heart quite like a good friend so we're now going to take from this we're going to take the uh, um, what I'm going to use as a water splodge and I say splodge because all of these are sort of splodgy so uh, photopolymer really easy to see through and we are going to use some pool party I think on this one so let's um, ink this up well in the pool party because they're um, shaped um, so light and dark in the image you have to be careful to make sure you've got it in and we're going to give a little bit of a space above because I want to put in something underneath and we're just going to put that in the centre there we go so you've got a nice sort of pond pool of water which I thought would be quite nice okay now put that away because I don't think we need that one for the time being now I want to just sort of ground this pool of water a bit so there's a one that looks like 
where is it here and we're going to just have that across the bottom I think or do I want the other swirly thing now I think that that'll work okay so I'm going to put that on I've got various different blocks out because there's different shapes so it's nice to put them on different blocks and I don't want that to be overly dark so and it's going to be sort of ground um, I think I might have that in let's do it in smoky slate shall we because that will sort of tone it in a little bit I think I think I think okay let's just see how dark that's going to come out no that's going to be perfect I want it more of a sort of a shadow thing so this we're going to try and take it just sort of down on the side and then into that pond just like that that's a little bit high but never mind we can sort of alter that bring that one down a bit that's better and then we're just going to take it into the center down like that the nice thing with this stamp is that you can that's better bring that down a little bit like that okay so we've got it sort of um not not up in the air as it were with just sort of a little bit of detail at the bottom and the smoky the smoky slate is quite nice because it's um fairly subtle because i didn't want anything sort of too much on there um okay so now we need some greens i'm going to choose mossy meadow which is quite a nice dark green and um oh no first of all i'm going to put my deer in there's two lovely little deer so we're going to have those in and the nice thing is that all of these fit on the little a block which is quite nice and the deer i'm going to do in a good black because i want them to stand out and um, they're going to be sort of silhouettes so let's see if we can get this one i'm going to have to get my head in a bit because it's very difficult with my lights to see where they're going so excuse my head if it just bobbed in but that's where we want the deer and as i say i want them in a dark because they're sort of going to be like silhouettes um okay so put that back there now i can get the trees now we have on this one various different tree images and there's three sizes of fur cones so we've got oh in fact there's four one two three four four sizes of fur cones um however i don't want this great big huge one i just want the three little ones so we're going to start with the largest of the little ones and again they will fit onto the uh, um the little a block which is quite good and then we're going to get up the mossy meadow i nearly said old of it olive but it's mossy meadow and we are going to put some trees around and again excuse my head if it comes in right we'll have a tree there and we'll have a tree just going off the edge there now these trees are all going to be full strength because we want them to be in the foreground so leaving a bit of a space between them okay so we've got four trees around there and that's with the largest one then we're going to take the second size down or the the third size down but of the three smally ones it's there's three of them i'm doing the second size down and then this time i'm going to stamp off once and then just put one behind stamp off once and then put one behind now i'm doing this because they are different sizes so that they come as if they're in a shadow in the background and then this one will go just off that way now where the um deer are i'm going to put some of those as well by stamping off which is why i chose a dark color they don't stand out too much and they're as if they're in the background which i think is quite nice then we're going to take the littlest one of these three 
so they're the ones at the bottom um, so they're this one this one and this one so we're now going to take the smallest one and we're going to do exactly the same thing so we're going to ink it up stamp it off once and then we're going to go again into those spaces okay so you then have it sort of going back and then you can if there's a little bit left on there it says me I get a real shine with my camera but I'm going to try and go in between these and just just do a few just really far back like that okay so we've now got it um, sort of going back into the distance and that's the easiest way I've found of doing it with three different sizes because then it looks you've got the large the middling and the small which makes your eye um, look as if it's going back into the background so um, so that gives us the um, the shape that we want now we are going to build up a scene on the top now we're not using the stamps for this let me just put that ink away for the moment. Um, we are going to use our sponge brayers and we're going to use a little mask because I want to, says me, yes, I've got to, this one here. I want to have a moon coming down through this because I thought it would look quite nice in, in, you know, sort of moonlit sky. So I'm going to take a post-it note and um, I'm going to stick the post-it note onto, have I got a scrap of paper? Um, no, I'm going to take a bit of copy paper because I've always got that. So I'm just going to take that because if you try and use a punch with straight onto, um, on its own, you find that the edges will get, um, it's too thin. So the edges get all sort of frayed. Whereas if you put it onto a post-it note and then take it off and try and get it as near as you can to where the post-it note comes, you find you get an absolutely perfect little circle. And let's just separate that off. done so well it's actually stuck to the back there we go and we're going to just put this in the sky like that and put it down okay so that's our little mask for the moon and then we are going to take some um, different shades of blue so we're going to have let's have I'm just going to stand up so I don't wog on my lights we're going to have um, Bermuda Bay. We're going to have um, Pacific Point and we'll have Knight of Navy. I think that'll work. Okay, so you want sort of three shades because you're going to do it light through till dark. So we're going to start with the lightest. And I know Bermuda Bay is quite bright, but with the sponge brayers, it does. Uh, um, it does take, um, it starts quite light, if you see what I mean. Okay, so we need our scrap paper, very important. And we are going to ink up and you go down, you go roll down and up, down and up, down and up. Because what you, if you rub it backwards and forwards, you get too much ink in one space. So it's a down, up, um, as if you're loading a brush, if you're, um, um, you know painting the walls with a roller it's always down up down up down up to load your brush and then you always start from off the paper if you start straight on you'll get a line so if you start off the side and just roll it on you don't get a line and again I'm doing up down up down up down up down and I'm going right down to where the water is and then back up again. Then I'm loading the brush up. OK. 
okay and then doing exactly the same thing so taking it off and bringing it down turning it over a bit because I want it to come evenly so I want that bottom where the deer are to have just a little bit of this blue okay so and that's why I've chosen a darker color I probably would have chosen a slightly paler color but I wanted to um, to just so that you would be able to see it if I use the pool party to start off with it's very pale so that's our and you can use the same roller um, as long as you go from lights to dark so now we're going to go Pacific Point which again is quite a bright blue but what I wanted was for it to um, just load that up I wanted it to have that sort of mid-tone of blue in there so again starting from the top and bringing it down and then when you get to the bottom just to blend it in you uh, you go across it but you do it very lightly so that as I say it's a seamless blend and it really is very simple to do okay I think we might should we have one more on there yes I think so so load it up again move it to the side I really love doing this I don't use my sponge brayer often enough but it's a, it's a way of getting a really nice background without it being um, I'm rolling it quite flat as well on there so you've got those two tones now and then we're going to go into the Knight of Navy and again load it up so as I say a down up down up down up motion taking it off from the edge and doing it quite lightly and just bring it down I find that uh, uh, one side always gets darker than the other so that side gets darker because of the way I'm um, I roll it with my hand but it actually is quite nice because putting the moon in that direction what happens is that you end up getting a very nice um, reflection of where uh, um, of where it's um, the moon's coming so it doesn't matter if you don't get it right onto that side as much you'll find whichever hand you are right or left handed um, by doing it sideways it's an easier way of doing it so I'm going to take it down to here like that right I think that's probably about right you can build it up and build it up as much as you want but when you look at it that way you can see you've got all those lovely tones coming in so I'm going to put that out of the way for now um, I might need it just for a second because we're going to take the mask off for the moon and you have a beautiful white white moon now if you want the moon to not be quite as um, bright and, and make it look a little bit more realistic just literally go over with the sponge brayer with what's left on your uh, um, on your brush and what happens is it'll just tone it down a little bit so it's not quite so stark and white but I think that that looks really pretty okay so the next bit that I want to do is I want to have some um, some sort of twinkly starry bits in there now I've got um, some of our shimmer paint and what I do is I just put it in one of our um, um, little spray bottles and um, just mixed it up now this actually is some of the gold shimmer we've got the we did used to have four and now we've got um, champagne mist and we've got frost white either of those would do I've just actually got some uh, some gold in here and I thought that that would be quite nice now what I want to do is 
with that little piece of paper. I'm just going to mask the bottom because I don't want it to come onto where the um, where the bottom of the card is. I want to keep it quite nice. And I'm going to spray off just a minute so I get my spray going because I want it quite fine. And then from quite a distance, get my nozzle the right way. We're just going to spray it on like that. And I've directed more at the top than the bottom. Then you're going to take a piece of kitchen towel and just put that in over the top. Smooth it down and pick it up. And what happens is you've got that sort of snowstorm effect coming from the top. Now, my snowstorm's pretty sort of heavy because I think my nozzle is a little bit, uh, um, little bit overdone. So I'm just going to try and spray it. We spray it off a minute. That's all right, because I want it to be light. I'm going to stand up because I just want a little bit at the bottom. So, whoops, wrong direction. Don't you love nozzles? They go everywhere. I have a fine thing of glitter everywhere. That's better, I think. So, might have had, uh, I might have got it everywhere. So, let's take this again and just do that little bottom bit. And as I say, if you just sort of smooth it over the kitchen roll, it picks up and gives you that's better. I've got little tiny bits at the bottom. And also it means that it's not coming right down onto here. But you also get, and I don't know whether you can see it. I'm going to try and pick it up and, and you can just, um, you get the most gorgeous sparkle on this. Um, which is really rather nice. And I think it, it sort of adds to it. So let's take this... Um, scrap paper out of the way now because we don't need it that can go in on the bin and we are just going to mount this on mount it on a bit of blue um i'm not going to do all the oh that's not going to fit is it um let's have a look have i got another piece here yes that piece is a little bit bigger always have different mats and mounts and things cut so just pop that on there like that you could put it on whatever you wanted. I just thought it would look quite nice on the blue. Um, but you have a really lovely, fairly simple to achieve. It's nothing too complicated here. It's just a little scene, but it looks absolutely lovely, I think. So I hope you enjoyed that. Do look forward to seeing you again. And thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.